Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this panel, uh, Introduction to the Container Orchestrated Device Group or COD Working Group. Uh, my name is Renaud Gobert. I'm a software engineer in NVIDIA and contributor to Kubernetes as well as the NVIDIA Container Toolkit. Hi, Renaud. Uh, I'm Mike Brown. I'm, I'm a member of IBM. I, I work on open source development in, 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 a, in a group that gets, gets a chance to work on all the latest, greatest stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm particularly a maintainer on Container D, OCI projects, um, I work with the Signo team in, in Kubernetes and, and, and maybe a bunch of other CNCF uh, projects. Hello, and I'm Alexander Kanievsky. I work for Intel as cloud software architect. My main focus and areas where I'm mostly involved is enablement of different accelerator devices and uh, with specifically node resource management, like the complex problems. Hi, uh, I'm Rinald Patel. I work for Red Hat. Uh, I've been working on uh, containers for a long time, been a maintainer of Lip Container, Run C, OCI Runtime Spec, Cryo, and I participate in Signode upstream. Hello, everyone. I'm Urvashi Murani. I'm an engineer at Red Hat working in the container runtime space, and I'm a maintainer of Cryo and participate in Signode as well. So let's start this panel with a brief introduction to the COD, or Container Orchestrated Device Work Group. Um, we are a small group of device vendors, um, runtime maintainers and contributors, as well as Kubernetes SIG members. Um, this working group falls under the CNCF runtime umbrella, uh, SIG runtime umbrella, sorry. Um, and this is because we interact with many projects um, such as Kubernetes, Nomad, um, Containerd, Cryo, um, and um, other projects like Kata or in the HPC space, Singularity or Saris. Um, the charter of this group really is to improve the support of devices in the cloud native space and across it. Um, what that really means is that we're trying to enable new workloads. Uh, we're trying to smooths out the experience um, that you have as a user or as a cluster administrator. And we're also discovering and trying new ideas, such as defining the, the security boundaries for devices. Um, and what that really means, what does it really mean to try and enable new workloads? Um, that's a question that I'm gonna be asking and looking very intensely at Alexander from Mendel. Yeah, thanks, Rano, for such introduction of working group. And indeed, uh, the usage of devices in past five years or so is growing uh, in the cloud. And like a variety of workloads are utilizing devices nowadays. It's machine learning, it's data plane acceleration, encryption, compression, whatever uh, uh, things what can offload the CPUs. And devices which actually we are talking about uh, well, just to name a few, like we have NVIDIA GPUs, one of the most commonly used in the cloud. And from our, from Intel side, we have FPGA, Quick Assist, uh, also GPUs and, and some other devices. When from different vendors, we have smart NICs and, and obviously all of those vendors who have a devices wants to enable them in the cloud. And the way how it's enabled, it's evolving. Uh, if previously it was, just like Docker run dev my device. Nowadays, we users are expecting to have it in a more complex setup in, for example, like Kubernetes distributed orchestrated workloads. And by the way, kudos to Renault and NVIDIA who drove uh, the current implementation of device plugins in the Kubernetes, but actually simplified a lot usage of uh, NVIDIA GPUs in uh, device model, uh, learning, oh, sorry, deep learning, uh, model training. The main thing actually which uh, it helped, it helped to change the mindset of a cloud users. What devices is not something rare, it's something, it's a commodity what they can be utilizing inside way workloads. And changing that in the mind actually brought uh, a lot new subset of the problems. 
both from a use cases perspective and from user experience uh, perspective. So if previously user wanted, I want a device. Nowadays, uh, we are talking about a lot more complex scenarios. Like one scenario is we have a VM-based runtimes and we want to use devices where we have devices which have uh, different properties. So for example, users say, I want FPGA with particular bitstream loaded. Or we have connected devices where the smart NIC says, I want to be connected to specific uh, network and uh, RDMA pipeline. When we have even more complex scenario when the multiple devices within Node is connected as a pipeline, like FPGA, NIC, special Isaacs, and so on. And when the worst case scenario is something what NVIDIA trying now to, to solve is multi-node uh, deep learning. So where you have a device is connected between the nodes and you have a problem with the device become a resource not as a single node, but a cluster resource. And to utilize that in the workloads, we end up with the existing all extension points is not enough. We need to do a lot more uh, the way how we describing devices, the way how we preparing devices, the way how we pre uh, preparing the workload and how we run it. And based on all of that, based on all the discussions what we have in the working group, we realize that what we're, uh, where different APIs between the CNCF uh, components needs to be improved. The overall user experience needs to be improved to enable all of this. That's some pretty co cool use cases. So special devices are now commodity. Are they special devices now? What do you think, Urveshi? I've, I've heard about this cool ID called CDI, the Container Device Interface. Could you talk to us about it? How does it help solve these different use cases that Alex from Intel just talked about? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so the container device interface or CDI for short describes the mechanism for container runtimes to create containers which are able to interact with third party devices. So currently there is no standard for device support in runtimes and orchestrator engines. For example, Kubernetes and Nomad both have a concept of device plugins, but they have very different frameworks for these device plugins. Docker has an entry plugin me mechanism, while Podman has the concept of hooks. And this holds true for other container runtimes and orchestrator engines as well. Uh, this lack of standard results in vendors having to write and maintain multiple plugins for the different runtimes. So with the CDI, the plan here is to have a standard way of supporting third-party devices so that the user experience is consistent regardless of which runtime or orchestrator you use. Portability between runtimes will be easier and there won't be a need to resort to various hacks for the different runtimes, which in turn means that maintainability will not be um, a nightmare, or at least much less of a nightmare. So in Linux, it is quite straightforward to expose a device node into a container for a simple device. All you need to do is pass a flag and the device class to your runtime. However, complex devices like GPUs and FPGAs require much more involved operations, as Alexander mentioned earlier. These operations can range from things as simple as compatibility tests, can my container run on this device, to device-specific operations like reconfiguring an entire FPGA or memory management and GPUs. Now, the CDI is only concerned with providing containers with the ability to be aware of devices. Tasks like resource management is not part of the scope of the CDI. This narrow scope greatly simplifies implementation of the CDI spec and provides good flexibility for runtimes and orchestrator engines. The CDI follows the model of the container networking interface. A JSON file is return, written to a well-defined path on the machine. The JSON file contains vendor-defined information on device-specific as well as operations that the container runtime needs to support. And this information is used to transform the OCI spec accordingly, which in turn results in admins having a seamless experience while setting up dedicated devices. So basically, the Container Orchestrated Devices Working Group is aiming to improve the supported devices in the cloud native space. And CDI is our first effort in the field. That's a really cool introduction to CDI. Thank you very much, Urveshi. Um, you just said that currently um, 
the space is really fragmented in that different orchestrators have different mechanism. Um, Renal, you uh, are a contributor to the OCI, which is a standard spec. Could you tell us a bit more how you thought or how you think this is um, doable or this, this, is, this use case is addressed today? Uh, sure. So if you think about the OCI runtime spec, the way it works is you write a config.json that describes how a container is created and run. So think of the properties of a container, such as its root file system, like it could be based on Ubuntu, what you see inside a container, all the files, that's a root file system. The process that you run, it could be like a bash shell, the namespaces uh, from Linux that are used to define the, the container and the security aspects of it, such as SA Linux uh, capabilities and so on. So when, you, when the OCI runtime spec was created, networking was one aspect that was considered as out of scope. And the reason being that there are tons of ways to set up networking for a container and different vendors would have different solutions at layer two or layer three. And the runtime spec didn't want to uh, get in the way of trying to define every possible way to set up networking. So the idea was to introduce hooks, which can then be used to join the network namespace of a container and then set up the networking as uh, you see fit. So that was one use case. And another use case I can think of is enabling systemd. So if a hook sees that someone is trying to start the systemd process in a container, it can set up the right mounts, the right C groups uh, for systemd. So systemd can start up seamlessly without any additional setup by the user. And the final most interesting use case uh, is enabling GPUs. So GPUs have a lot of setup that, are, that is required beyond just uh, adding the device node in the container, like setting up additional mounts, running LD config, and so on. So initially, this started uh, with, with a custom hook that performed all these steps. Like, but writing these hooks is not easy. You have to uh, know the knowledge, you have to know the internals of how containers run how RunC uh, works with mount namespaces and so on. And then you have to join all these namespaces and perform these operations. So it's a very imperative, low level, bug prone approach, if I would say so. And there are also some security risks. So if you think about it, RunC or any container runtime is better suited to perform these operations. So writing all these hooks you can see a pattern emerge that most of what uh, these hooks are doing can be done by RunC. So that's why the idea of CDI is to be declarative. So CDI allows you to declare what uh, additional changes you want to make to your container. Like you want to add a mount, you want to run a hook, you want to do some additional configuration. So instead of your hook doing all these operations, you, CDI is allowing you to make changes to the spec file so RunC can perform those operations for you. So that's how CDI helps and simplifies uh, the status quo. Thank you for this um, example and just explanation of what happens in a low level. Um, talking about low level, I know that Mike is a contributor to Containerd. And I've been following a bit that space and I heard about this mm. new ID that's called NRI. Could you talk to me about NRI? Is it the same thing as CDI? Is it something different? What do you think? I, you know, I think, it's, I think it, it is somewhat different, but I think there's a, a huge opportunity right now to, to integrate the, the efforts uh, between, between you know, CDI and, and the NRI effort, um, as well as work with the Signo team with, you know, with Kubernetes at, at coming up with, a, you know, additional integration. Um, we haven't mentioned much about the container runtime interface, um, but the, the CRI was put together by, uh, by, by the Kubernetes team to specify how the container runtimes should manage these, these pods and the containers. And, and over time, they needed more. They, they needed uh, to manage the resources that are 
that are on these nodes themselves directly in some cases. They needed to monitor, monitor their health with probes. And, and they went around the container runtime and, and that became a problem in some areas. While we've all agreed to use CNI for networking integration at the container runtime level for the container runtime integration implementations, um, and, and we think that's been a good model, it hasn't been the way we've done all the other resources. Um, I think the, the issue right now is that, you know, some teams see, see this from a pod spec level or a container specification level, and other teams see it from more from a low level hardware implementation level on the node, and how do I gain access to those devices I can use outside of a container, inside the container, right? And, and Renal certainly had a, a really good way to solve that problem with the hooks. Um, it is very low level. Um, and, and Mr. Crosby, uh, you know, who created uh, the Run C originally, uh, came up with this idea after looking at all this and answer, asking a lot of questions. He came up with an idea to do a, a new node resource interface that would, would provide for the capability to add plugins that container runtimes would implement or be able to, to, to be able to run that would actually access these hooks in such a way that the container runtime knows that they're happening and hopefully with caps that will will do for SIG node, Kubernetes will also know what's going on and be able to manage those resources from a higher level perspective, you know, by talking to the plugins through CRI. A lot of work to do here. Um, and a lot of opportunity for, for, the, for, the, for the, all the groups that hopefully are listening to this. We, we need help. If you go to container D uh, slash NRI, you'll see, you'll see a, a brand new repository that Michael created, a bunch of code, some samples, um, and we're looking for ideas. It, it doesn't support pods yet, but that, you know, another PR will, will push that in so that you can, you can actually create plugins to manage the resources for your pods and and containers using the hooks underneath the covers that, that Merrill and team put together in Run C, and hopefully will be implemented in the other runtimes. Again, we'll have to work with the runtime teams, you know, like like CATA containers, um, to to make sure that when we at the shim layer where we host these instances, you know, for of VMs or of, of containers that we that we've got, you know, the ability to manage these hooks, ma to manage these access to these resources in the containers. So that when the container writer just wants to use it, it's just there and it's easy to use. You get a better, a better user, you know, a better user feel when when they create their pod specs and, and things just work. So what I'm hearing from you is that there's a lot of work, uh, but it's exciting. All right, uh, let me go back Great. to let me go back to the roadmap. I think it's really important that we talk about this group's roadmap to finish the presentation. It. So, because we know intimately the problems, um, we've decided to tackle it um, through a layered approach. Right now, we're solving this core problem, uh, which is how do we expose a device to a container? And the solution that we've come up for that is CDI. And as Brunel has mentioned, it's, it's a very declarative approach. Uh, and it's something that we are really excited to um, show. Um, as we continue through this process of solving these problems, um, the next step here is the node level. How do we select which device needs to be assigned to which container? And the problem that we're trying to solve here really is when you have workloads that are very sensitive to performance, when you have workloads that have multiple devices talking together, um, you want to be very conscious about what CPU, what memory, what NIC, what GPU, what FPGA, what ASIC you're selecting. If you have a CPU that is very far away from your NIC or a NIC that is very far away from your device, um, you might destroy the performance to the point that it might not be even worth uh, talking to that NIC. Uh, and so selecting which device um, needs to be assigned is a very difficult problem. The next step here uh, is when you start looking at it from a cluster level, when you have workloads that need to run on multiple nodes and communicate together, or when you have devices that are over the fabric. Um, typically, um, you want to have these devices talk to each other 
the better of talking to each other would be very close. Uh, for example, on the same rack. Um, and so the problems that we're trying to solve here, they require um, the ability to figure out where the right knobs to expose to the users, where the right plugins to create and plugin systems. Um, and they're really exciting problems, but also very challenging. And so um, there's still a lot of space to be discovered here. And this is the conclusion of this panel, is that we are still a very new group and there are lots of really exciting and challenging ideas. Uh, we'd like people to contribute and to help us um, figure out where are some of the solutions that could be done in that area. We would like feedback. Some of these ideas are gonna interact very, um, very strongly with other ideas out there. And um, how do they intersect? Um, so if you think that CDI might help you, we'd be more than happy to have feedback from you. If you think that CDI might um, be something that, um, um, that, that, that you could be used, that you could use, if you think that CDI is something, or uh, some of these ideas that we're talking about, you want to be able, you want to integrate, let us know. We'd be very happy to hear about your use case. And the way that you could let us know is go to the COD working group meetings. Um, they happen every other week uh, on SIG Runtime Zoom. Um, and we're really waiting to hear from, to hear from you. Um, and with that said, uh, I'm gonna open the floor to questions from the audience.